back at Kent and we're about set for this opening tilt on the Mid-American Conference Television Network. And Ray, when you look at these two teams, Miami won the toss, elected to defer. Kent will have the football first. It appears to me Miami wants to establish the tone right away. Oh, their defense played great last week, particularly against the run. They held Ball State to, what, about 191 yards on the day. So they want to get out there and let that defense get things started for them and then hopefully get good field position. On the other hand, Kent State, they got Astron Watley. He's going to return this kick, and he's going to get the ball about 40 times today, so they'll get a steady <laughs> diet of him. And Kent and Coach Jim Corgill, they want to get that young man loose and hopefully maybe even uh, connect on some passing game today. Well, the game officials are led by the referee, David Neal, and his crew, and uh, James Thomas, Robert Moran, Steve Pajuric, Don Edwards, Richard Freitschik, and Joe Duncan. So Miami will kick first. They have played one football game against Ball State, and it was a nail-biter, went right down to the wire, and Chad Seitz's 51-yard field goal hit the crossbar at the end of the game. So Actually, you know, that hit the upright, and it was about 10 feet up. That thing was good from 60. Just a little bit off. Hope you enjoy it. Chad Seitz has it teed up on the 35, and we are underway for a brand-new season of Mac football. Wadley at the two. Watley to the 20, and that is it. So Watley brings it back, and Kent State will go on offense for the first time, led by their quarterback, Todd Goble, a redshirt freshman, 6'2", 211, out of Delaware, Ohio. Threw for 199 yards last week and 52%. But the guy to watch in the backfield is number four, and he is lined up at tailback. So it's first and 10. For Kent State, first play from the line of scrimmage, and Watley will get it. And he is wrapped up by maybe two, not much more than that. And Patrice Morgan and Brad Carlisle on the right side of the Miami line made the stop. Watley had a lot of success running that toss last week. I think this guy's got as good as uh, vision on that toss, good timing. He knows when he's got to take it outside or when he gets to, has to cut it up inside like he did on that last play. The line of scrimmage is at the 22, so it's second down and eight for the Clashes. A lot of balance last week. They like to go to their tight end, but Watley will get it this time, running a pitch, and he will get up over the 25 to about the 28-yard line, but that is it. Johnny Williams in there on the stop, and again, Brad Carlisle. Sixth year, and Western, or West Carrollton is his uh, hometown, and here is your defense of Miami, the LCI defense with your defensive line and then your cornerbacks and you'll see the free safety as well along with the strong safety and the two cornerbacks. They play a boundary corner uh, and, and that's basically the defense of the Miami Redskins. Big third down play, third and three from the 28 yard line. Goble to throw, the outlet is incomplete. They tried to hit Chris Morgan coming out of the backfield and Miami is held on the first series. Yeah, Morgan caught two passes last week. I also like to mix him up and, and run the ball, but uh, Goble didn't let that play really develop. Should have let that ball, let it develop a little bit. He might have had the hook pattern instead of dumping to the back, running on the arrow route. So now Kent State's forced to punt. Three and out, Miami defense did what they wanted to. Forgotch will kick it off, and uh, Roger Forgotch, the punter here, and Nod Washington is standing back about his 35-yard line, and it's a wobbly kick. Washington comes up to the 42. He'll make one move and get about eight on the return. Miami goes on offense for the first time at the 49-yard line. And we'll be back with more action after this network timeout. You're watching Mid-American Conference Football Network. Well, roughing the kicker penalty on the punt has given Miami, or I should say Kent State, the football back, Ray. So and instead of Miami holding, they give it up, and it's first down Kent. Yeah, that's the kind of mistake that's going to drive Randy Walker crazy. You know, his team had some 
some problems last week. Mistakes cost them a fumble, a block punt, and now a mistake here early gives Kent another shot at it. So Goble brings him to the line of scrimmage, which is now the 32, and the flashes operate from there. Here's Watley, sweep right. And he'll gain about five. He'll bring it up to the 38-yard line. Johnny Williams, who led the Miami defense last week with 13 tackles, gets started on the right foot here today. That's a little misdirection that I didn't see on film in their game, in uh, Kent's game last week with Youngstown, but it's another wrinkle where they try to get the ball to Astron Watley. There's going to be a steady diet of him today for the Miami Redskins. Well, when you touch the ball 43 times in one football game like he did last week against Youngstown State, there's no question he's going to get the ball, and he gets it again. There's the same play. Right side, run out of bounds. As Cleon Plummer runs him out on the near sideline. Cleon with a brother at Ohio State out of Wyoming High School in Cincinnati. Tim, they got a first down on that one. What, what Kent likes to do is work that weak side because they figure if they can get a man on a man, and they give one man to Watley, let him work that guy, and they figure in a, either in a small space or even a large space, he can beat anybody one-on-one. -on -one. So they don't block one guy. They leave him for Astron Watley, and generally he's able to do the job, and he did there. He's got a first down. Well, quick feet. That's one of the uh, uh, strengths of Astron Watley. He likes to pick his spot, and he's got quick feet. First and ten, second first down of the game for Kent State. There's nothing there for Watley that time, a loss of a couple. And Kenyon Harper blew through there, the middle linebacker. 6'3", junior out of Detroit, makes the stop. Yeah, Miami was in a blitz on that when they sent D. Walker up on the outside, and, and uh, Harper's coming up on the inside. He plays off that well. It reads out of the blitz and, and makes the tackle for no, like, no gain. Actually, a loss of a yard. Middle linebacker so important in the Miami Redskin defense. They've had some great ones there. And Harper's filling that void right now. Morgan in motion. Here's Watley again, this time up the middle, and there's nothing going on at all. Not much room at all because Kenyon Harper's right there once again. Second straight tackle for the junior. And also you had Johnny Williams come up from his free safety spot and add a little pop onto it. I was watching Williams in warm-ups. He had a few things to say to the, the Kent State football team. He was giving them a little bit, and he's that kind of guy. He's a spirited, fired-up guy. He's got a lot of confidence. No question he's going to go after him every down. Uh, he led the Mid-American Conference in tackles for loss last year, but he has changed positions this year. Instead of playing linebacker, he's playing free safety. Here's Goble to throw over the middle, and it's picked off, picked off by Miami. And that is Ernest Perry, 5'11", junior out of Columbus, and the first turnover of the football game. Perry had two picks last year. He gets this one because Goble throws the ball before Watley's looking for it. He's going right down the seam down the middle it's a good scheme but he's got to either give it time to clear out let him get behind the people or have his receiver look if you if he's not looking boy don't throw that ball neil young doherty, quarterback neil doherty brings him out and uh, you'll see two quarterbacks today for the miami redskins doherty the workhorse the warhorse senior and ricketts is a sophomore sam ricketts but this is doherty to start the game miami in red pants for the first time and that's dylan mccullough brings it up over center, he has a six yards, and it'll be second down and four. Yeah, we, we talk a lot about Astron Watley on the other side. Well, you're going to see a lot of Dylan McCullough running the ball for Miami. Had 100 yards last week and uh, gained 1,103 last year. In fact, he's uh, trying to be the fourth, actually gain over 1,000 for four consecutive years. No one's ever done that at Miami. Uh, you saw the offensive line, four new starters on that line for Miami this year, and your backs and wide receivers for this Redskin team. McCullough gets it again, and McCullough brings it to first down yardage. It crossed into Kent territory for the first time today. And if you joined us late, Miami picks off a pass by Todd Goble, first turnover of the day, and this is their first opportunity on offense. Gerald Washington made the stop on the play for the flashes. This is your LCI defense of the Golden Flashes, and they are very, very young. They have two linebackers, Quincy Faulkner, a freshman, a true freshman lineup on one side. Brian Miller, a senior, played a lot of football as they bring the chains out, and we'll find out if it's a first down or right. The front seven is, is pretty young except for the front four. The free safety, the strong safety, and the two corners are extremely young for Kent State. They're young football players. One, the nice thing about them, though, Tim, is that they go after it. Oh, These yeah. guys play 100 miles an hour, and that's, that's how Coach Jim Corrigal wants them to play. And you can make up for a lot of, uh, say, lack of experience. You can make
make up for that by going just a little bit harder, and they certainly do that. Well, Jeremy Atkins brings the play in from head coach Randy Walker of the Miami Redskins. They have a first down on the 47-yard line of Kent. Opening quarter, no score, 10 and a half minutes to go in the first. Offset eye this time, and Neil Doherty to put it up for the first time today. And it's complete. Complete to the 28-yard line, and it's a first down, Termaine Banks, the junior out of Alliance with his fifth catch of the year, and he turns right in front of Joe Carr, who makes the stop. Perfect execution of, for Miami on that one. Play action pass, Banks runs back there in his zone, so he just makes his cut inside. He gets behind the linebackers who were drawn up by that fake. Doherty throws a strike, which he didn't throw a lot of them last week. They're glad to see that first one come out like that. Miami's got something going now. Only 45% last week for Neil Doherty, and he's a career 55% thrower. He is a fifth-year senior. Here's Banks on the reverse. Banks to the line of scrimmage, and he is snowed under. Kent State all over that play, led by Joe Carr, the free safety. Boy, they might have to go back to the drawing board on that play because they ran the reverse back to where they originally faked, so they had everybody over there as it was, and there were just too many blue shirts over there. To, it looked like it was going to be open early, but you know they were faked over there, and that's where they were. To, a host of people made the play on that one. Well, that young secondary, if they were trying to keep, catch him sleeping, mm -hmm. they did not do that at all. So loss of one on the play, a line of scrimmage to 29 of Kent. Here's Doherty, and somebody ran the wrong route. Either that or it's a miscommunication because Doherty threw it on the outside and Banks was going right to the goal line. Yeah, Eric Henderson in the slot there, he saw what was happening. It was a blitz by Kent State. He pulled his route up, but the other receiver, Tremaine Banks, didn't see it, didn't pull his route up. The quarterback saw it, threw it, nobody's there. So you've got an incomplete pass. The well, Hall comes out and Nod Washington brings the play in from the sidelines and Kevin Wilson is the coordinator of the offensive unit for Miami. He was with Randy Walker at North Carolina State. Here's Doherty to throw again, blitz this time, they throw it over the middle and it's, in, it's complete, but boy, nothing more than just to the line of scrimmage as Justin Strayford makes the hit on Henderson. Yeah, he led that team with tackles last week, had 14 tackles. He's a littler guy in there, just 196 pounds, sophomore, but he moves around so quick and he makes big hits like we just saw on that one. All right, Sanford doesn't have a whole lot of uh, height, but boy, he can hit well. So now the field goal attempt, it will be a 45-yarder by Chad Seitz, the senior out of Cincinnati, two-time All-American Conference field goal kicker. They'll mark it down on the 36, make it a 46-yard field goal in the first quarter. Does it have enough? It is just under the crossbar, incomplete, and the, it is no good. Chad Seitz misses the field goal. So, we'll be back with more Mid-American Conference action after this network timeout. You're watching the Mid-American Conference Football Network. The Mid-American Conference, a solid tradition, a promising future. First chance of the ball game to score. Miami misses a 46-yard field goal. They had an opportunity to convert on a turnover, and that's going to be a key part of this football game today, right? Converting on some of these opportunities. That it is, and I wonder what's going on inside the helmet of Chad Stites. There's Watley. Come to the near sideline. He's got 16 yards so far, and he gains another five as he's run out of bounds. And the last guy to, to hit him was Cleon Plummer and Jamie Taylor. Well, D. Osborne was coming on a blitz again, and he just blew somebody up in the backfield. But Watley so quick, he was able to get by that whole traffic jam, that mess, get the corner, and he beat Ryan Abel, the new uh, inside linebacker playing for Miami, to the sidelines, picked up a nice gain. Ryan Abel, a redshirt freshman out of Newark Central Catholic here in Ohio. 
235 pounds. Second down and four from the 35. Watley again, trapped in the backfield, and he's just going to step out of bounds. No place to go at all as Brad, Brad Carlisle was the last man to hit him. Also there, Johnny Williams. Williams has this linebacker mentality. I don't know <laughs> if you're going to be able to get that out of him. Talk about the, just the difference between playing linebacker and free safety, Ray. It's adjustment. Yeah, the, the biggest difference is as a linebacker, you're, you're taught as soon as you see something, bam, you fly up there. Whereas as a free safety, you've got to let things develop a little bit more before you can make a commitment. That's the hardest adjustment to make. And, and that's the thing that Coach Walker was concerned about when Williams made this adjustment. But he seems to be catching along fine. And, what he brings extra is an extra pop to the hit when he does get there. There's the numbers for Goble for the year, and he gets it stuffed right back in his face. Oh, what a big, big play by D. Osborne, the Mid-American Conference's top guy last year at uh, coming at him and uh, the, uh, throwing people for losses, and he's right here with this Yeah, one. not much of a fake, kind of a throwaway fake, but they're trying to set something up, and Osborne's coming again on the blitz and gets the hands up. Makes a big play, all MAC performer last year. And one of 61 Butkus Award uh, candidates for 1995. Fourth down and six. Ball at the 32 yard line of Kent. Morgat in again, and he gets a good one off this time. That is Nod Washington again, and he is snowed under at the 42 yard line. So about a four yard return on that ball, and Miami will run on offense. One more time, Chris Pogan on the tackle for Kent State. The Coach Corgill said he, he wanted to get better on special teams this week. He liked what his, what his punter was doing for him, but uh, the, the protection and the coverage is something that they wanted to work on. Did a good job there. Don't miss any of the action as the Mid-American Conference champion faces the Big West Conference champion at the Las Vegas Bowl for Thursday, December 14th, Sam Boyd Stadium, Las Vegas for the MAC. Riviera Hotel Ticket Package, call 1-800-634-6753. Call your travel agent or U.S. Air for low-priced airfares. First and 10 from the 42. Here's McCullough near side. Got a block, 50, 40, out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Boy, a great run right there, but you know what's great is the execution on the play as they sealed off the corner, got a good block downfield. You'll see it coming right at you right now. There's one guy out here, number nine. What's going to happen? <laughs> he gets he gets juked a little bit. Like McCullough makes a nice move, setting up that block inside. Hits for the sideline. Nice run. This guy is, is an excellent running back too. We talked a lot about Watley, but uh, on the other side, Dylan McCullough is a tough running back as well. 26 yards, first and ten from the 33 of the Golden Flashes. Lone run setback is McCullough. Two tights. He'll get it again. Break a tackle, 30, and to the 28-yard line. On the stop is Mike Berry, 6'1", senior out of Downers Grove, Illinois. He played at North High School. Berry had a big week last week. Oh Three boy. sacks against Youngstown State for a total of 19 yards loss. And, and uh, him and Dylan McCullough will get together quite a few times, I imagine, today. As you look at McCullough, needs only three yards to become third all time on the Miami running list. Yeah, Jay Peterson is the guy he's going to uh, surpass, and Jay just had a little girl. Great. And congratulations to he and his wife. He's on the uh, Miami coaching staff now. McCullough cuts it in, makes a nice run to the 20-yard line. Uh, he made something out of nothing. Yeah, he made, uh, what he made was himself the all uh, third all-time leading rusher for <laughs> the University of Miami, because uh, yep. Miami University, I should say. Yeah, Sean Thompson it. right there for the hit, but uh, Dela McCullough moves up. I got, I think he's got an outside chance with a huge year to be the biggest, the best all time. George Swarn's got that record. It's a, a healthy record yeah. to, to break. He'd have to have an excellent year to, to about reach four, it. About 1,400 yards. But he could do it. Yeah. Ball on the 20 yard, 21 yard line. Here's McCullough again. This time he's stopped in the backfield. Gerald Washington shed the block and boom, he was right there. Yeah, a little help from Mike Berry in there as well. Uh, Washington and Berry, two of the seniors on the Kent State defensive line. They're the guys they count on not only for leadership, but for making plays like this. As they, you see Washington just get the legs and then Berry comes and finishes him off. McCullough, six carries, 44 yards here in the first quarter. And we're winding down to the six minute mark, no score. Miami has missed a field goal from 46 yards. Deep back is McCullough. 
Beverly in motion. McCullough going sweeping right side. Got a block. All the way down inside the 10 to the six yard line. Out of bounds, first down. He's another guy that does a great job running outside. He's got good timing getting there, setting up those blocks. And when he gets to that corner and he gets that time to turn it on, he's able to turn it on and make a big play out of it. Here he goes right here. You're going to see him now. He sees that opening. He's hitting it right down the sideline. Good blocking by Miami. They seem to be controlling the line of scrimmage right now. Well, they didn't give up the line of scrimmage against Ball State last Thursday either. It's but Ball State was pretty tough inside yeah. as well. First and goal at the six yard line. First sustained drive of the ball game. Here's McCullough off left tackle. That defensive the flashes is tough. They will not give it to him. Al Phillips comes up from the strong safety spot. The freshman, true freshman out of Euclid making the stop on Dela McCullough. We're gonna say freshman a lot when we talk about the defensive backfield, but that's a good solid tackle right there. Sticking in, he's got a lot of help from his buddies, people piling on. And this is a, it's a tough area to move the football down here. And uh, Miami's look for them maybe to resort to some sort of trickery at this point. Well, in the red zone, it's awful difficult to score. And it's second and goal on the Kent 7. Five minutes to go, first quarter. High formation this time for Miami. And McCullough will get it. Oh, he bounces off a tackler, dances inside the three. And that's about all they get. Thought they may have gotten to the two, but that's it. Joe Carr on the stop, but also Quincy Faulkner, a true freshman out of Forest Park, Ohio. McCullough weighs 205 pounds, and that was Mike Berry. He hit who comes in at about 241. <laughs> You're gonna watch it. Bam! Oh. He delivers the flow <laughs> and keeps his feet going, and that's a sign of a good back when you can deliver a shot. I mean, he took a little bit of a shot, but he gave a lot more than he take. Kept himself going, and uh, they're gonna what? They got about two, three yards to punch it in. They mark it on the three, third and goal, big play. They bring Henderson back in and split the uh, wide receiver. McCullough the deep back. And he'll get the football. Go for the touchdown. Miami has scored. Dela McCullough into the end zone. And Miami takes a 6 nothing lead. That's just good blocking. And, and throughout that entire drive, Tim, they had good blocking. They controlled the line of scrimmage for the most part. They've got a running back who's running very hard, and he's just going to take the ball, and nobody's going to touch him on this one. You like Those are the kind of touchdowns you like as a running back. No one touching you, just waltzing right in. And now the extra point attempt. Chad sights on for that. He needs to make one, even if it is just an extra point. Confidence booster, and that one threads the needle. So, 4.06 left to go in the first quarter. 7 0 Miami, and we'll be back with more action after this local timeout on the Mid American Conference Football Network. Attention, sports fans. When you need a score on any game, call score. at a participating Kendall dealer. Kendall Motor Oil. Hey, man, bye. This drive, a little tone setter. Oh, without a doubt, Tim, they set the, the tone at the line of scrimmage because that's where Miami dominated the Kent Flashes on that drive right there and handing the ball to Dylan McCullough, running real tough, getting some extra yards afterwards, but he had a lot of open holes, a lot of times where he shot through there and didn't get hit until the secondary. Kent's got to shore that up, or we could be seeing a lot of that all afternoon long. Watley and Britt are back deep, and there you see the kickoff formation by Miami, and there's the receivers as we're set to go as Miami will kick off now after they have punched it in the end zone. And Seitz will tow it, and Watley will get it in the end zone. And, and he decides, uh-uh, I don't think so. Let's go down to the sidelines, and our Mike, D. Pasquale, Mike. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. And with me right now is Lang Kennedy, the athletic director at Kent State. And Lang, despite the score right now with Miami <laughs> on top 7-0, you have instilled a party atmosphere. It hasn't dampened yet today. 
and for the first time, I'm told, in 10 years, you brought back tailgating. Is that part of what happened last week? Yeah, oh, we had a great time last week. We had a great tailgate. It's the first time in 10 years that we've had tailgate here at Dick's, and we're trying to get the environment here so they can come and enjoy a, a great product, a great football game, and have lots of fun. And, and uh, you know, this week is, is sort of... Uh, uh, we got a lot of students responding to this, and you can see in the student section that uh, we got a tremendous student crowd, and uh, we're, we're really happy. And it was a tremendous uh, week for us, and and uh, you know, in, in this great business, you have to do it again now. Well, Lang, the party's just started. I'm sure for uh, Kent State, along with you. Best of luck to you. Thanks well, a lot. Thank you very much. We throw it back upstairs to you guys. Joe Miller made uh, the actual his first to carry of the day, trying to counter that. Uh, Miami drive. They, they're beginning yeah. to go wide on, aren't they, Ray? And that's what they do. They'll give it to the fullback from time to time just to give him a break, give Watley a break. Okay. Second out and six for the flashes. Goble to throw, bat it down, and almost, uh, almost completed uh, to Miller there. And uh, so that was batted away by D. Osborne. Here's the Central Reserve scoring drive as it took eight plays for Miami to get in the end zone, 58 yards. 351 was the time of possession. And of course, the three yard run by Dylan McCullough. So the Miami Redskins lead it seven to nothing. 321 left to go in the first quarter. Tim, we're still waiting for Kent to get something going on offense. I haven't seen any, you know, they had a couple first downs with Watley running the ball, but they haven't really been able to generate anything, get anything working yet. And that's what we, we, we were looking to see. I don't know what they're looking at down there on the field. The, the officials are looking at a hole in the field. I think they were concerned about some of the turf out there as we look at Todd Goble, the uh, freshman quarterback who's in charge of getting this Ken offense going. Well, that's one thing that Jim Corgo was uh, talking about, the fact that Todd Goble took control of this team, and he's a good leader, a guy that can come out here and, and uh, lead by example. Now the official is going across the way and talking to Corrigal on the sidelines. And uh, yeah, there's a problem, I think, right, right near the 30-yard line. And you can see it's kind of like a pothole out there. I, I'm not sure if that's exactly what they're talking about, but I think there is a problem with that thing. And now they're running down the other end. Uh, maybe they're going to get a wheelbarrow, come in and fill this thing, do a little gardening <laughs> while we're at it here. Hey, I've had a busted rim once, and I, f I think I filled <laughs> for like an hour and a did, half. Did you really? <laughs> well, but Hopefully it won't be that no, bad. No, no. David Neal is now um, the official is at the north end zone, and uh, he is talking uh, to a couple people as you look Browns at the Miami through, yeah. defense. That's Terry Hepner and a couple of the other officials there. Hey, here comes the canister. I think they're going to bring in some yeah, dirt. Bringing in some dirt. I tell you, we got it all. Well, I think what has happened is is they want to cover up a sprinkler head. That, that is, from what we understand up here in the booth, what they're doing. They're going to cover up a sprinkler head that uh, has popped out. So we have a little delay for that, and we will get it covered up, and we'll be all set. I see there. Look Look, there you go. Just dump a little sand on it, now step on it, pat it down good. What we need is a guy to jump on it. That's Test right. it out for good. Do we have it really work. How about one of those linemen? Uh, Jason Haymans is 261. There you go. <laughs> there we got who? Who's over there stepping on it right now? All right. Well, at uh, Powerhouse Productions, they believe silence is not golden. For customized on-hold messages, call 1-800-473-9004. Powerhouse creates on-hold messages that reinforce your company's image, increase sales, pass on identification, and information, and entertain. Powerhouse Productions, your on-hold message specialist. Now the incomplete pass, and it'll bring up fourth down Ernest Perry on the coverage. For Miami. Goble had plenty of time on that one, but it's just good coverage by the Miami secondary. He really, he had no one to go to, and at the end he goes to the tallest guy out there that he can see, and that's O.J. Santiago at 6'6", 256, but uh, not able to bring it in. Well, the guy cut five balls last week, uh, the junior out of Ontario, Canada, so I know they want to get the football yes, to him. Now here is the punt, nearly black. Washington will get away from it as it bounces at the 45 to the 35, and this is a good punt. All the way inside the Miami 30, and the Redskins will have it first and 10 from their own 27-yard line. Yeah. Two 
minutes and 51 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Let's go down to Mike on the sidelines. Mike? Well, Tim and Ray, here's the stuff they're using to fill that hole at the 32-yard line. It's probably about the size of a nine-inch shoe, they're telling me. And it's at the 32, and the referee said, look, we got to fill it then. It's probably uh, part of the problem, the referee told me, from last week when uh, Astro and Watley uh, he ran for 142 yards, plenty of carries, and they uh, just chewed up the ground last week, and it's a continuation. <laughs> What is that stuff? It's a little bit of sand, a little dirt, and I think a little bit of uh, old-fashioned Mother Nature to get that thing filled <laughs> up. <laughs> right there. Right. McCullough, Thanks, <laughs> McCullough takes the handoff and goes straight up the field, and he gains four to the 35. Looks like something you might want to see on the on the golf course. Yeah, at the, on the tee box. That's right. where you see that stuff, and, and I've rarely taken a big divot. Oh, I'm I sure bet. you're a hacker, and, <laughs> and you're into that thing all the time. But uh, <laughs> that's good that they got that stuff around. If we have any other problems, we've got it taken care of. We'll send Mike out there to do the, the groundwork next time. A little shovel action. <laughs> Miami in control, 7 nothing with the football. Third, a second down and three. McCullough finds a crease, gets the first down to the 42. Dean McCullough running hard here this afternoon. He had a ugly 101 last week against Ball State. Yeah, I talked to you earlier. You said you saw the game and you when he saw at the end he had 101 you're like boy how did he get that 101 I think it was kind of on runs like that where it looked like there was nothing there and he's shaking shaking and finally he gets through that little hole and makes something out of nothing well the coaches uh, couldn't believe the stats either but Dylan McCullough certainly had uh, his uh, fifth 100 yard game so it's first down and 10 Beverly in motion and McCullough on the uh, crack back, and he will find a seam. 45 and into Kent State territory at the 48. He makes a nice little cut, and boom, he's off to the races, and Brandon Bigham makes the tackle the left corner for the Golden Flashes. Yeah, the Miami offensive line is really doing a nice job right now. And you look at McCullough's numbers. The reason he's getting those numbers today and last year is Mark Stroka and Mike Bird doing some good blocking for him. They both pulled around from their left side to the right side that time and led the way. Well, last week they were concerned about the fact that uh, their offensive line had four new stunners, but it looks like they worked on it all week. And McCullough will get it again. He's the hot back and he crosses in to the 45 and they might mark it on the 44, but a good run by McCullough as he takes it again. And Miami's really controlling the tempo of the game on the ground right now. Now Miami, if you ask anyone about him coming into this season, the one thing where they do have strengths, as you watch McCullough pound the middle of the line, picking his way through there, their strength was at quarterback, and, and they had some good receivers as well. That didn't show up last week, so this week they're going to the ground game, and they look pretty strong on that right now. McCullough comes out to get a breather, and Ty King will be the tailback on this series. First and 10 from the Kent State 45. Doherty to throw, out an open man, down the sidelines, and Jeremy Atkins takes it all the way down to about, let's see where they're gonna mark it, the 28-yard line, Brandon Brigham is again the man on the stop for the flashes. Not much of a fake here, but Doherty right away goes to his outlet guy. Now last week they tried to go long time and time and time again against Ball State and weren't able to connect on a single one of them. I talked to Neil before the game today. He said, we're going to hit secondary receivers. We're going to throw underneath. We think we got something there. Well, Coach Randy Walker said that they need to be patient mm -hmm. and stay within the game plan. They tried to get the, the big ball, but they were 0 for the Ball State game on that. Here's King bringing to the near side, and he is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Now the flashes were ready. Al Phillips up to make the stop for the flashes. Yeah, nice play by Phillips on that. Also, uh, he had some good help from someone else, but that's the kind of play Kent State needs now. They need to get somebody in there and put Miami in a, pa a true passing situation instead of let them pound on them like they've been pounding on them all day. Well, a loss of two on the play, and it moves the ball back to the 29. Second down, and, and that is the end of the first quarter. So. Miami controlling things here early in this football game. They lead by a touchdown, seven to nothing. And we'll be back with more of the action after this network timeout. You're watching the Mid-American Conference Football Network. Well, it looks like the...
Gutenberg Plevin, because you won't get justice by accident. One quarter in the books. First play of the second quarter of action here at Dick Stadium, southeast of Cleveland in the little town of Kent, Ohio. It's a big town today. Here's the intercepted pass as the pressure was on Neil Doherty and Kent State with the big play. They come up with a big play as Quincy Falker makes the interception. Well, I don't know who Neil Doherty was throwing it to that time. You watch the replay. Look, now, I, you, get, you see Henderson's coming around behind. Him. Is it going to be a statue of liberty or something like that? But it looks like they're trying to set up a screen, and Doherty just throws it. Uh, a botched play by Miami, and it cost him this time as Kent comes up. Falker comes up with a big interception. Well, he led the team in tackles as a true freshman last week, and now he gets a pick. Here's Watley. Watley over the 40, gets about five to the 43-yard line. Let's go back to the sidelines, and here's Mike. Sidelines right now will be a big job for the maintenance crew, the groundskeepers at halftime. I'm told that they'll undergo some major repairs on the field, some different spots. As you see behind me, the ground simply has been chewed up between uh, the running game of Kent and Miami. Thanks, Mike. So the Kent State flashes now with a second and six on their own 42 after the interception by Quincy Falker. Here's Goble, and he can't get the ball out to his wide receiver, Walker who is really running just a simple out route, but he had his man beat and had the first down. Yeah, I thought Goble had some problems last week of getting his rhythm early, getting his timing on some patterns, on some easy passes really like that. And you look at him right now, he's having a tough time starting 0 for 6. The only way you can go worse than that, of course, is if you go 0 for 7. We'll That's see what it. happens on the next time. I think Jim Corrigal's hoping for the first one right here. Second year trying to rebuild a program that uh, has had some problems as of late, but Jim Corrigal's in charge now, and they had a huge win last week beating Youngstown State. That ball's in the air, and it's picked off. Picked off by Miami, and it's Kenyon Harper. Right place, right time, and he gets the ball back to the Miami offense. Well, they were trying to get that completion, but they were trying to get it to their own team, not the other team. You can't really put that one on Goble, though. He threw the ball in there. He's got a little zip on it, maybe a little too much zip on it, but it goes right off his man's face mask and, and it's up in the air it's a free ball and boy linebackers love that when that ball's popped up in the air Harper just grabs it and then he tries to turn into a running back not a big chance of that happening but <laughs> Harper's a happy man right now junior out of Detroit had a sack last week 11 tackles and now this week with an interception first and 10 from the 43 of the flashes for Miami Doherty off the McCullough he comes to the near side he's at the 35-30 and out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Joe Carr, the free safety. Well, Miami's just doing such a great job blocking and not just at the line of scrimmage, but at the point of attack, got downfield. Eric Henderson's gonna throw a nice block. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it. We'll, we'll see the results of it right there. And that's Dylan McCullough going free down the sidelines for another big game for Miami's their running game. Here's a, here's a look at it. There's one block there. This other one's going to be on your left right there. There it is right there. Henderson just controls his man, and that opens it up for McCullough on a big game. It's first and 10 from the 16-yard line of the flashes, and here's McCullough up the middle, and there is not much at all this time. The flashes will not give up the line of scrimmage this time. Now, they're a young defense, and, and the one thing that they do have on defense is a never-say-die attitude and spirit that Coach Jim Corrigal puts into these guys. And they're going to need that today as you look at McCullough's numbers. <laughs> He's got it going on pretty good. He might break that Miami record today <laughs> if they keep giving him the ball. Well, Randy Walker believes in giving it to the hot man. That's what he did when he was playing football for Miami. He was blocking for the hot mm -hmm. running back. And here he is again. McCullough going outside. Oh, he gets a big block, but this time the corner comes up and it's Tony Britt who makes sure that he doesn't get outside. Britt did a nice job of, of containing that. Now that ball, he kind of he sets it up. Now watch how this is going to be set up. He's coming inside. He looks like he's going to come inside, gives him a little stutter step right there, and then he's going to break it outside. He's got a man set up for the kickback, the cutback, the chopback block. There's too many men out there for Kent State. Nice tackle there for Tony Britt. Last week, 9 of 20 on third down for Miami. This is a third and six. 
from the 12. McAuliffe to throw, and Henderson can't hold on. Eric Henderson had it in his hands, but could not control the football, so it'll be fourth down, and on comes Chad Seitz. Yeah, and drive stalls, and this is a, I don't know, you want to have Seitz do it, a chip shot to get his confidence back. Well, this would be the one to do it. As you know, he missed the, the what, 51-yarder last week at the buzzer that would have won the game for him against uh, Ball State last week. So it's kind of a, it gets inside of a kicker's mind. So this is from 29 yards, and he's 15 out of 17 in his career. There's the spot and the kick, and it's good. So Chad Seitz tacks three more on with 12 minutes and 40 seconds left to go here in the first half, and Miami leads it now 10 to nothing. We'll be back with more of the action after this network timeout. You're watching the American Conference Football Network. You ever hear anyone? Coast to coast. Well, Miami capitalizes on the interception by Kenyon Harper. Four plays later, they get a field goal by Chad Seitz. Lifts his confidence, and it's a 10 nothing game. Yeah, that's uh, Randy Walker's got to feel good about that. His defense getting the ball turned over. The running game's looking real good. As you look at the scoring drive, only three plays, 46 yards. Just took a knock a minute, 42 off the clock. But Miami has got it going on now. Kent's got to do something to change the momentum of this football game. Well, Miami has run 20 plays already in this game through a quarter, and they have gained 130 yards and limited Kent State to just 26 in the first quarter. So uh, you can talk about domination, but that is a, a pretty good quarter of play. Sites boots it near side. Watley at the 12-yard line. Got the wall. And about uh, 29 or 30 is where they'll put it in play. Let's go down on the sidelines, and here's Mike. Mike? Well, Tim, I'll tell you what. In college football, the idea is to bring fans with you when you're on the road. And with me right now is Chris Brywick with the Red and White Club from Miami of Ohio. And, Chris, you brought some people here to Kent today, but I guess the busloads will be going to Northwestern next week and uh, Ann Arbor in a couple weeks. Exactly. We're off to a real good start here today. We're excited about the way this game's going, and we're looking forward to uh, – two great trips coming up. It seems like you've generated that support in Oxford and along on the road I see in Kent today. Exactly right. We've been working real hard to get our fans involved with all of our sports, not just football, but we're really excited about the crowd we have and look forward to the next couple of road trips. I think Chris is going to be uh, driving a bus up to Northwestern. <laughs> we toss it back up to you guys. <laughs> ah, you got to do it all. Watley Airborne gets a couple and that's it. Yeah, that defense is stiffening. Yeah, Johnny Walker came up and tried to put a tattoo on him. Big hit, and Watley's just too much of an athlete, and he's able to pull up, avoid that one, and dive forward for a few yards. And middle of the line by the Redskins is awfully strong, and then when you think of Williams as a free safety, in addition to who they have at linebacker, no wonder they put him at free safety. Here's Watley again. Little seam, if any. He's going to get the ball a lot, 43 times last week, and Harper all over in this week at the middle linebacker spot makes another tackle. Yeah, good, good vision by Watley. Nothing in front. He makes a little cut back. Linebacker did a good job of staying home. That's a, a hard thing for a, an inside linebacker, particularly playing against the back like Watley, who's able to get that corner so quick. Harper did a good job staying inside out and closing and making a uh, tackle for a short game. Early on in the first quarter, they were running Watley wide. Mm -hmm. Now they're beginning to bring him inside. I predict that they're going to go wide again or try to get the ball wide to him. And here's Goble to throw. Looking for Watley. Now no place to go. And he's sacked behind the line of scrimmage. And it is Jawan Armour making the stop on the play. Armour, backup right linebacker, a true freshman from Toledo. Yeah, they like Armour. He's a, he's a good ball player, but the, the key, look at this move. A little arm over move, gets inside. Now he stays alive. Keep up, get up, get your feet going. There you go. Now the freshman quarterback has got to get rid of that ball at that point. He, he just kind of froze because this man, Watley, who he was looking at the whole way, wasn't open. He freezes, and you get sacked. Well, you can't lock on. Good hustle play by Miami, though. The punt on fourth down, and 
It'll drive Washington back to the 28-yard line. And oh, there's a smack. <laughs> oh, what a hit by Brad Hartman. Big time hit. Hello. Goodness. Yeah, I want to see that one again. <laughs> I, I love I love this. This is what the game football. A little miss there. Now the man set up. Hello. <laughs> Flying right inside the helmet there. Uh, I fun. figured you wanted to see that yeah, again. That, I, that's your kind of football. See that all day. <laughs> it's now time for our Frickers trivia question. Remember, watch Mac football at any Frickers location and enter to win free Las Vegas Bowl for accommodations, compliments of Frickers Restaurant and the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas. Now here's today's Frickers trivia question. What former Kent linebacker later became the head football coach at Notre Dame? Jack Lambert. No. <laughs> They could have had the job if he'd have wanted. He'd go in there and tell him, that's my job. That's my said, job. Yes, sir, Mr. Lambert. Yes. <laughs> One of the greats of all time played right here at Kent State University. Miami continues to try and ground it out, and why not? They've had such success running the football today. Kent's got to do something to put Miami in a, in a third or second and long situation, take, out of that, take them out of that grind it out mode, which they're in right now and doing a good job as Ty King is in the backfield instead of Dylan McCullough. Time of possession and number of plays. I mean, they're on their way to like an 80 play day here. Ty King left tackle and he puts a hit on as he goes across the 40 to the 44. But Justin Sanford is right there. Justin Sanford, just a sophomore from Woodmire Village, makes the stop on the play. Boy, he's a small guy at 179 pounds of playing that linebacker spot. Yeah, but you know what, he takes people on, he plays bigger than that, and he's also very fast. That's what they like about him. Last week he led that team with uh, you know 14 tackles and a fumble recovery, and a lot of his tackles, eight of them were assists, and that just means that he's a guy that's always running to the football, getting there, and getting in on things. You've gotta have a linebacker like Stanford. 9.36 to play in the first half. Beverly in motion to the right. Look out. Here's McCullough. He gets away from one. His receiver was not open, and he'll just take it himself and run it out of bounds and knocked out by Brian Miller, a senior out of Cincinnati Purcell Marion, and the linebacker knocks him out of the bounds at about the 46. I tell you, Steve Simonowski coming off the right end had him dead if he'd had his eyes open because he went in right by Doherty, and Doherty just bootlegged around, but he had a shot in the backfield. And uh, just didn't see him, so Doherty gets over there, and it, you know nothing much happens on the play. But could have been a big play for Kent. Flashes like their ends, and Barry on one side, and Simonowski on the other. That's their strength of this defensive front four. Second down and seven, ball on a 46. Here's King up the middle, about the 49, and that's about it. So the Kent State flashes have stiffened here on the last two possessions of the Miami Redskins. Yeah, they're tightening up a little bit, getting stronger play from those linebackers, and and uh, they, they got to do that now or this thing's going to get away from them because they're getting out rushed by over 100 yards right now, as you can see, and, and they're just getting dominated at the line of scrimmage. This would be a big, big stop for Kent State if they want to get back into this football game. Well, if they get a turnover here, then they can change the field position as well. Third and four, ball on the 49, Miami's 49. Doherty to throw, there's the out, and it's incomplete. They tried to get the ball to Nod Washington, and he was covered by Tony Britt. Yeah, I don't understand that play. When you, you know, Kent was in a man-to-man, -man and they're up tight on the man-to-man. -man. So in a situation like that, your stop route like that isn't going to work. Stop and go, that might be nice. But, you know, the wind grabbed that ball a little bit, too. We've got a nice wind down there, a good breeze on the field that will affect the ball when it travels more than, say, 20 yards. Every time I come to northeastern Ohio, the wind's blowing. Is that right? <laughs> My golf game would suffer. Uh. <laughs> Definitely suffer. Well, Tony Britt is back deep, and this is the first punt of the day by Jason Cheney, and it is uh, short, but he may have been wanting to hit it short. Here's Britt, leveled right at the 15-yard line. And so, with 8.30 to play in the first half, We've got a break and timeout on the field. 10 nothing Miami. And we'll be back with more of the action after this local timeout on the Mid-American Conference Football Network.
back to Dick Stadium and Ray Bentley, Tim Bray. I think we've got a heck of an uh, advantage point up oh, here. Oh man, this we can thing. see it all from here. Yeah, this is a great stadium to watch college football in as the Miami Redskins and the Kent State Golden Flashes going at it here this afternoon. That play didn't go anywhere. Flashes are having a lot of trouble uh, running the football. Yeah, they tried. Now, they had some success with Watley early on, getting him outside, especially running him to the weak side, get some good block and get some one-on-one -on -one stuff with him. But, uh, you know, when you're backed up, it's really tough to run a football because Miami is gearing up and trying to stop that run, coming up with an eight-man front, and, they, you know, they're not going to let him run it out of there. He's got a new tailback. Sure do. Marlon Gates is in there at tailback, and the, there's a flag on this play, and Miami is all over. Marlon Gates replacing the uh, tailback that has run the ball so successfully, the Mid-American Conference freshman of the year last year, Astron Watley. Yeah, they're going to give Watley a break. He's carried the ball just about every time as of right now, you know, for the golden flashes. So they're going to get this young guy in here and give him a shot as well. He's a freshman out of Middletown, and uh, that is in Ohio. That, they sort out the penalty here. Yeah, I was checking my depth chart. I've got Joe Nice coming in after Watley, but apparently uh, they went a little deeper on the depth chart than that. And they'll move it half the distance for a crackback block and blocking below the waist. So that will move the football back yeah, into about take a look at it right here. Yeah. Oh, that's how dudes get hurt. That's how people get hurt. You got, when you come in from the side on a crackback block, you've got to block the man above the waist. A lot of times the man won't see you as he did not see him in that situation. It's very dangerous, and that's why they say you've got to hit that man above the waist. So Gates is the tailback, a freshman out of Middletown. This is, again, this is a very young football team, and Gates will get the football, and oh my, just at the line of scrimmage, D. Osborne with a big hit. He had some help, but Osborne brings him down. Yeah, and Osborne is the guy that will welcome you to a football game, to a conference, to his world. And here's a, a, a nice welcoming right here. Hello, <laughs> D. Osborne. What a great football player uh, last week. Uh, you know, led Miami with 15 tackles, had 116 tackles last year. Just uh, And he was one of the reasons why they were able to move uh, Johnny Williams into the secondary because D. Osborne plays like two people out there. <laughs> First team on Mac, and uh, he's proven it here again this afternoon. 0 for 6 on third down for this uh, Kent team, and yeah. he threw that football away. That's intentional grounding. That's intentional grounding, and I'll tell you what, big play by Jason Holmes, who blew through there. They're going to call the intentional grounding on the Kent quarterback, Todd Goebel. I think that's going to be a, an automatic safety in that situation. And that's a freshman quarterback maneuver right there. Throwing a ball like that, you can get yourself in a dangerous situation, maybe give up an interception and then a touchdown. As it was, you're going to give up the safety because he was definitely trapped. Holmes had a, made a nice rush and got him. They you see Johnny Williams. He's not praying. He's giving you the safety signal down there. They decline the penalty, take the safety, mm -hmm. give Miami two points, and it's 12-0 on the safety, and you got to give a sack in that situation to Jason Holmes. Yeah, he did a great job of getting in there and, and uh, forcing something to happen. So Miami put some points on the board, and we'll be back with more of the action after this local timeout on the Mid-American Conference Football Network. University bench at and find out how we've helped thousands of homeowners for years. So stop worrying. We'll get you the money you need now. Two, one. Yeah, baby, it's home. Safety it's home, by baby. Miami, and it's 12 nothing. as you take a look at that Miami University bench as they have a, a complete control over this football game with 6.47 to go in the first half. That's the kind of effort Randy Walker was hoping for today. You know, he thinks he's got a pretty good ball team, and he does. He just needed to get some of the kinks out, and they're getting them out today. He thinks he's a kind of contender here, and 
This may open up 50. And that's about it, but back into Miami Ter or Kent State territory. And Roger Forgash, the punter, brings down the ball carrier. Hey, punter made a nice job. Usually you don't see those guys coming up and, and making sticks like that. But Forgash comes up and puts a hit on him. But and it's a good thing he did because Banks, you know, he was one guy away from making this a 19-zip ball game. Well, Banks can really fly in the open field. So Neil Doherty brings him out to the line of scrimmage. He's gone all the way so far for the Miami Redskins. A little motion displayed here, and here comes McCullough. McCullough gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Pretty nice play by Justin Sanford. Sanford, again, playing almost a middle linebacker. He's playing in shooting the gaps. Well, he's the guy they use. They use kind of like a desert storm defense where they put him up on the weak side, stack him in behind the tackle, and, and let him just come up. And a lot of times, lines won't see that guy. Offensive lines won't be able to pick him up. They can come up and make a big hit. And guys like Dylan McCullough here can't get past the line of scrimmage in a situation like that. Saw a lot more movement from that D-line last week against Youngstown State. A little counter and draw. And oh, nice play, nice pickup. First and 10 Miami as Dylan McCullough continues to roll on as Joe Carr and Brian Miller make the stop for the flashes. Yeah, Gene Guidry had a nice block on the inside linebacker, Brian Miller. It was almost like one of those Velcro blocks where you get stuck on a guy and you just can't get off. And when you give a guy like McCullough that kind of crack, there's your, there's your Velcro. Yeah, yeah he even <laughs> used his hands. And, and, and it'll give McCullough a chance to, to make a cut. Well, Gidry is the only guy back, the only returning starter from that uh, offensive line for big Miami. Man. He is a big man. 6'3", what, 300? Close to it. <laughs> yeah, bring Dorden. him to the meat house <laughs> to weigh him. Yeah, that's one way to get scale a first house. down. A scale house? Yeah. You like big people. Though. Yeah, what, what Doherty did there, he just jumped into the – the road graders back pocket there, and I'm talking about Goodry. Gene Goodry just rides him down for the first down. Yeah, every once in a while, you got to hop on board. That's right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Miami uh, now with 11 first downs here in the first half, and uh, Kent State has only got a deuce. Four and a half. We make it five and a half minutes as the clock rolls on. First and ten. Ball at the 34, McCullough goes outside. Got a block and close to first down yardage. He is inside the 30. They're gonna mark that possibly at the 24 yard line. Terrell Clinton pushed him out of bounds. Well, you're just getting great blocking by the receiving core for Miami. I mean, they, they're not catching a lot of passes today, but they are doing some great blocking. And that time it was uh, Nod Washington coming over there and, and really he, he put uh, Tony Britt right on the ground and opened it up for Dylan McCullough to get another nice game. He's putting a show on for the home folks. He lives about an hour from here. That's home for him, which is Campbell, Campbell, Ohio. And he'll get it again, this time off tackle instead of going wide. He goes off tackle and McCullough continues to churn out the yards. 21 carries for 149 yards in the first half as Brian Miller makes the stop inside on Dylan McCullough. Yeah, that, that, two things. Number one, the, the Miami offense is really doing a good job generating a running game, but Kent State, or I call him Kent State, Kent, the Golden Flash's defense is not putting up that big of a fight right now. They need to do something, maybe start some, some, uh, some uh, games or some blitzing or something to put a stop to this running game. McCullough bounces outside and Brian Miller bounces right on top of him. So not much at all. And, and they need a couple like that. Right. And whether it's a shift of the, of the line like they did last week against Youngstown State or perhaps just uh, and Miami's not going to throw the ball if they can uh, establish the running game like they have and they're just going to yeah, keep churning like they this. They need to put up a bigger, you know, a, a bigger fight up front and then and free those linebackers up like that time. Miller was free and he was able to come down and, and make the play for no gain. And that's what they need to do. That defensive line is the key to stopping the running game. So McCullough comes out on this particular play. Ty King is the tailback. Doherty coming to the side, being pressured. And he throws it too far. Incomplete. They tried for the home run ball to Eric Henderson. And that one is incomplete to the senior. Yeah, I think Henderson had a step on Alfonso, or Al, I should say, Phillips. But uh, just 
didn't quite have the timing. And he had to get rid of it quicker than he wanted to because Justin Sanford was breathing down the back of his neck. As you look at the coverage, so he's got a step here. He's got his man beat, but that ball had to be delivered just a little quick because Sanford was, was coming after Mr. Doherty. So Neil Doherty having a, a pretty good to start for this season. At least he's healthy. Boy, he hadn't been healthy the last couple. He's going to try it again now into double coverage, and he fires it too far. This time, Britt's back there, and he had help that time by Al Phillips. So it will be fourth down. Yeah, good coverage. Real good coverage. You see Doherty dropping back, and he's looking that way the whole time, and that gives that safety. So the safety says, okay, that's where he's looking. That's where I'm going to bring my help. And there's this, you can see the man just gloved up. Good coverage by Kent. And uh, Miami, the drive stalls when they go to the air. So the flashes have held in this situation. Sights on to try to convert the 37-yard field goal. He's already hit one. He's one out of two on the day. Spot, got plenty of leg, and he's got it. So Miami tacks three more on the board. Three minutes and 51 seconds left to go here in the first half. 15 to nothing now as Chad Seitz goes two for three on the day. Chad Seitz converts here. Hotel accommodations for the Mid-American Conference Football Network provided by Super 8 Motel at Route 43 and I-76 in Kent. Call 1-800-800-8000 for reservations. Super 8 voted Motel of the Year for outstanding cleanliness, complimentary rolls, and great coffee, cable TV, no smoking rooms, and micro fridges. Life's great at Super 8 in Kent, Ohio. Now 26 yards for Neil Doherty, and he's on the phones upstairs trying to find out exactly what happened to the passing game. Yeah, that's that's the major concern for him right now. They've got the running game going. There's no question about that. They got their defense going too. I, I say you got to give the defense credit for eight of Miami's 15 points. They got the, the first field goal on the interception by Kenyon Harper, and then, of course, the safety, which led to that, uh, that field goal right there. You add that up, and even an ex-football player like myself can tell you that's eight points. And defensive guys, we count those points. Uh, that's absolutely. Right. You don't get too many shots at that. So. Well, I'm sure that the Miami coaching staff is going to make a big point of that safety because mm -hmm. Jason Holmes was all over the quarterback, Goebel. Well, Watley's got the football. And he's right up the middle to about the 24. He's an all-purpose back, a fun back to watch. He not only catches the football and runs it, but he's on special teams too. Jason Durso making the stop for Miami. A little uh, batted around, beat it up here before you catch it. But look at, watch this now. He's going to pick a hole, and then he's going. He's going, not a lot of dancing. That's <laughs> somebody's going to meet you in that hole often. But uh, <laughs> that's how you run a kickoff back. And because if you break through that first line. You're out the door the other way, and that's what you look for when you return a kick. Well, let's see if Kent can string a couple of first downs together here. See if Goble can complete a pass to his own team. He's got two to Miami, but none to his own guys. He's going to try and throw yeah, it, and an there's one. Watley. That will go for a big game. Oh, wow. but just in time Perry. is Ernest Perry right there to make the hit. If he doesn't make the tackle, <laughs> he's got 30, yeah, at least 30. At least that's going to be a foot raise. But you saw what they did. They're trying to give their young freshman quarterback a little confidence. Mm -hmm. So they throw an easy screen pass, a read screen. They get hooked the tight end over the middle. They run the back over there on the side. Just a dump off. Here you go. We got a completion, which maybe they should have gone to that earlier. But Perry comes up and makes a nice head-high tackle. Second and one, that was a nine yard completion. Here's Watley again, and he may have the first down. They will mark it at about the 36. And the interior of the line led by Johnny Williams makes the stop on the play. Yeah, nice nice first down run. You know, now they're, they're gonna try and get something going. Let's mix it up. They haven't thrown on first down until that last, that previous play, and they had a nice gain on it. So. Look for Kent State maybe to try and start mixing it up on offense a little bit. Well, Kent made a huge run in the second half against Youngstown State and, and scored with 18 seconds left to go in the ball game, and that was the game winner. Goble drops the football. It's a scramble for it, and I believe he's down. Yes, he got it back, and it will be Kent's football. That's a scare. Yeah, you don't expect that. Uh, you know, center quarterback exchange. Let's see if we, see if we can see anything. He go oh, come right up through his hands, and he's beating it up, trying to catch on to it. I don't know if he gets it right here. Look at it, skirt, squirts out again. They're going to call it down. Okay, <laughs> came right back to him. Well, Marcus Stepp was all over that ball. Freshman out of Fort Wayne covered 
the quarterback, Todd Goble. He's going to throw this one, and he does get the ball to his big tight end, O.J. Santiago. And uh, Joe Halsick makes the stop on the play for the Redskins. And yeah, Santiago does, does the old move where you, you come up and you push off, turn around, just get a little separation there, catch the football. They should be doing a lot more of that because that's really a hard pattern to cover. Uh, either it's going to be Palsic or Osborne having to drop off. Here's Goble again. And oh, no, it's intercepted. Kenyon Harper, he's going to go in. If he can get any juice at all, oh, he's going to be stopped at the two-yard line by Watley. Oh, he didn't have enough juice to take it in the end zone. Boy, that's, that's a freshman quarterback right there. You know, that's that, that screen that they ran previously, a read screen. They hooked the tight end up over the middle. He's looking at the tight end. Now, quick, throw it over there. But his man gets up too quick. That's a, what is that? Is that a second interception for uh, Kenyon Harper? Second and third INT for Kent. Yeah. Did he have the I, th I thought he had he didn't the wheel. get into the end zone. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think he made a mistake when he did his original cutback. Yes. I think he could have outran the quarterback if he'd have gone straight ahead. But you know, those guys don't get the ball that often. When they do, they like to shake it up a little bit, put a little <laughs> move on somebody. Wadley knows how to shake it big. Minute 37 to go in the first half, and Miami attempting to convert again. Atkins and McCullough in the backfield. Doherty going to take it himself. Right, Gidry right into the end zone. Touchdown, Redskins. There's an easy call. Just get into that Gidry's back pocket and say, you know, take me into the end zone. And he did it. Uh, another defensive score for Miami. They've got, what, 15 now on D. 15 out of the 21. That's not bad. Well, Miami's defense uh, has come to play today. And Chad Seitz now to uh, attempt the extra point. No, I thought Kent was going to get something going on that drive. It looked like they, you know, at least uh, upstairs in their minds, they had something going, something working, just weren't able to execute. And yeah, it was a great play by Harper, fighting off that low block as the kick goes through the uprights, fighting off that low block and getting himself in position to make that play. So Miami's Chad Seitz knocks down another extra point with a minute 33 seconds left to go here in the first half. 22 to nothing, Miami. And here is... Well, that's Goodry, the road grader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he blocked him with his hip. He hit him with the backside. <laughs> Just keep going. Good job by Doherty, though. A lot of times the quarterback won't keep his eyes open on a quarterback sneak. And at that time, you know, he did keep his eyes open and found a spot where it was going to be open. There's a warrior right there in mm -hmm. Neil Doherty. A uh, couple times he has had to sit out because of one, a shoulder separation in 94, and then the thumb injury in 93. He's a fifth year senior, been around a long time. Uh, a lot of people think he should have graduated a couple years ago, but <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, well, you know, he holds season. just about every Miami passing record, most attempts, and he most should. completions, oh, yeah. most yards. I mean, he's, he, in fact, he broke that just last week, uh, got the yardage record. so. He's a good one, no question about it. He should own them all by the time it's all said and done for Miami. So the Redskins will kick off with a minute and a half left here in the first half. Seitz boots it, and it'll come down to Watley again. This is kind of a short kick at about the 15, and he will move it up to about the 25-yard line, and that will be it. So uh, it is Ben Gerhardt. Backup defensive back from Lexington, Ohio, making the stop on the play for the Redskins. Look at Wiley. Doesn't he look a little frustrated there? Mm -hmm. Hands on his hips. I, you can imagine. You know, that's tough. Look up at the scoreboard. You're down 22 to nothing, and every time you get the ball, they got somebody hanging from you. So it's, you know, Kent's got to keep trying to do the same things they were doing in that last drive. Throw on first down, spread the ball around a little bit. Yeah, take some of that pressure off of Wiley and see if they can get something going. Well, they can't get dejected because we've only played a half. Goble will throw this one, and it is incomplete. He tried to hit his wide receiver, Walker, coming over the middle. Yeah, Johnny Williams thought he had a chance at an <laughs> interception right there. He said, hey, this is it's easy pickets. I want to get me one. He had good coverage on it, and, and again, Goble threw into coverage. And as a young quarterback, you know, that's, that's something that he will learn as time goes on. Second down, the ball is on the 27-yard line of Kent. Near side, they'll bring Williams and Walker as the twin receivers. They're re using three receivers on this play. And I'm sure they'll put Watley out there too, but nobody picked up the, the 
It's Holmes again. Yeah, it is. It's Jason Holmes, and he made – I think that was a stunt, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that Had they did be. his little inside. He, he, he took the outside path, his outside backer. I think it was Osborne in this case. Comes inside. Here, we got a good look at him right now. Now, you know what? He just beat him on an underneath move. You sell the man upfield, he gets that overextended. You just cut back underneath. That's a good move. Bruce Smith with the Bills. I taught him that move back oh, yeah. in 86. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, 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 look, he's still using it. Now they're using it here in, in the Mid-American Conference. So, you know, you start something that works, and, and people catch on. And Holmes is catching on. Yeah. Having a pretty good ball game. That's his second sack. Yeah, and he's a junior, uh, junior college transfer out of Grossmont uh, uh, Junior College out in San Diego. Timeout uh, at this point with a minute and 13 seconds to go here in the first half. But stay with us throughout the halftime. We'll be talking with uh, Jerry Ipodoli, the Mid-American Conference Commissioner, during the halftime break. And we'll bring you some scores. Mike will be along, so stay right where you are. And we'll keep you updated on what's going on in college football. This is third and 17 from the 20-yard line. Kent will have to throw it. Goble steps up, and he lost the football. It was stripped, and Miami's got it. Holmes got it. Oh, boy, is he having a game. <laughs> Jason Holmes falls on the football. Holmes has got, and it was Juwan Armour, I believe, that stripped it, the freshman. Yeah, now that was the stunt that we had talked about previously. They ran the stunt that time. He got the good pressure on him. As you're going to see it, here they go. Working inside now. Holmes coming outside, and your inside man is going to make the play. Put that ball away. No. Got his hands on it. Good job, defense. Rip that ball out when you got a chance. Holmes is on the ball. So we've got Holmes and Harper today are responsible for, for a lot of uh, havoc being wreaked on the Kent State Golden Flashes. Fourth turnover of the first half for the Golden Flashes, and uh, several of them have been uh, uh, simply put to, put to bed. I mean, they've done a real good job. Here's McCullough on the screen. Gets inside the 10. Still on his feet. About the six-yard line, he's finally pulled down. They throw it to McCullough, too, and Gerald Washington on the stop for the flashes. First down. Great job of open field running, and, and, and they're excited about it on the, the Miami sidelines right now. But uh, great job open field running by McCullough. Coach is getting me fired up. I'll tell you, that's, well, it's hard not to be fired up when you're ahead 22 to nothing and your defense is just basically doing whatever they want. But uh, going back to that play, in a situation like this, less than a minute left in the half, a lot of times they get near the sideline, and on defense you let your guard down. You think, ah, the guy's just going to go out of bounds. All of a sudden he puts the brakes on you, and, and that's how you can turn that into a big play. And McCullough is going 100 miles an hour all the time anyway. Well, he's over 140 yards on the ground, and he's just caught his first pass. So it's a, a big day for Dylan McCullough, and we've only played uh, just about two quarters. Yeah, he caught four balls last week for 19 yards, so they like to, they, you know, they, he's a lot like Watley in the Kent offense. McCullough is, is the same to the Miami offense. Get at the man the ball, either by, by hook or by crook, get the ball to him. They want to get the ball to this guy, too. That's right, Jason Holmes. They want to get him the ball as many times as they can because when he gets that ball when he's got his breathe right thing going, that means it's a turnover <laughs> for Miami. Have you ever put one of those things on? Those, no, I haven't tried one of them. Those are great. Boy, they, they work. <laughs> They're all psychological, is all it is. But uh, my kids saw those. They got to have those things on whenever they do anything now. Anything Jerry physical. Rice started something again, didn't he? Mm -hmm. There might be some motion this time, and McCullough uh, will take it up the middle. That might be on Jay Hall, the flanker, and it appears that Miami was moving before the snap. So with 49 seconds to go here in the first half, they'll move this one back as a legal motion charged against uh, the Redskins. It's been a clean half so far, not many penalties at all. No, we, uh, the big one we saw early, the roughing the kicker, which which really didn't hurt Miami. Other yeah. than that, we haven't seen a whole lot of penalties. You got two guys moving at the same time, and that's, they don't let you do that, not not on this side of the border. <laughs> up, up north they do, maybe. Jim Corrigal is Cor a legend in, in yeah, Canada, he is. isn't he? Yes, he Speaking is. Speaking of uh, the other side of the border, they, they got a connection up there, too. They're bringing a lot of players in where they have six or seven on the roster from, from Canada right now. Yeah, and I think that's an untapped uh, area. Yeah, everybody's talking about recruiting territory. You know. Kent's going to Canada. The great north. Doherty showing some wheels. And he'll step out of bounds. Nobody open. That's a coverage. Uh, well, it's not a sack, but it's a coverage play. And uh, Quincy Faulkner runs him out. Freshman out of Wentwoods High School in Cincinnati. 
That's the toughest time to cover your man when the quarterback's scrambling around like that because the guy can go either way. You're trying to watch the quarterback. Where is he going? You're covering your man. Is the quarterback running now? Do you have to come up and make a hit? There's so many things going on. That's real tough to maintain coverage in a scramble situation, and uh, Kent did a good job of doing it that time. 39 ticks left on the clock here in the first half. This is second down and 11. Ball on the 11. This is second and goal, and Henderson took his eyes off that one. The pass is incomplete, intended for Eric Henderson, and the Toledo senior just simply uh, tried to cut up field too quickly. Yeah, they had what they wanted. They had him in a man-to-man, -man. so what do you do? You break away from the man, and, and uh, that's what Henderson did. Doherty looked like he threw it right in there, but it, it got there kind of maybe quicker than Henderson expected, and it went right through his hand. I don't know if somebody got a tip on that one or not. It, it may have. It might have uh, changed the flight of the ball just a little bit because usually Henderson's a sure-handed receiver. Hall and Henderson go wide left, and uh, to the right is Tremaine Banks. Third down, they're going to go to Banks, fires it in there, and he can't go in the end zone. That was a third down play. They needed to get into the end zone. It was third and goal. Brandon Bigham on the stop. And uh, now, do you go for the touchdown or the field goal? Yeah, they're going to go for it, I think. You might as well. You've got a nice lead. Get some work down there on the goal line. I think they are going to go for it. 12 ticks, 10 ticks. Do you run the play or not? Eight. Uh, they're going to run the clock oh, down maybe, yeah. and play and kick the field goal on the last play of the half. I'm sure that's what's going to happen. There's Neil Doherty with the timeout, and they have one left. Two seconds to go now, and they'll bring the field goal uh, team on, and Chad Seitz will attempt his third field goal, actually his fourth field goal of the first half. He's hit a couple already. You know, he, go ahead. I said, you know, Doherty wanted to get that touchdown pass right there, and, and uh, the slant on the goal line is a good play. He'll have a lot of success with it, but – Usually that's against a man-to-man uh, -man situation. Kent was in the zone that time, laying back for something like that, and was able to come up and, and stop the play before it got in the end zone. So now we'll turn it over to Sites and see if he can set his sights on another field goal. You saw Neil Doherty there a moment, a moment ago. I think Doherty uh, believes that he's had a good half, um, a much better half than he had a whole game he's, at Ball State. He's done State. a great job of handing that ball to Dylan McCullough. <laughs> and I tell you, if you can do that, you can have a good half. So they're going to mark this ball, I think, on the 11. So that'll be the 21-yard field goal attempt. And he's hit one already from this distance. 21-yard field goal attempt. Sites uh, hit from 37 and also from uh, 29. Last play of the first half. There's the spot. And he knocks it through there from 21 yards. So Chad Sites ends the half with a 21-yard field goal, and Miami has put the three more up, and they lead at the halftime break 25 to nothing. Miami goes off the field with a feeling good, and uh, now let's go sideline, and here's Mike. On the sidelines, a, a happy coach, Randy Walker, and coach, you had mentioned earlier in the week that you knew Kent was on a roller coaster of emotions after beating Youngstown. It seems right now, right now you're up 25 nothing. You've derailed that train. Well, they, they played off well last week. They've got a lot of fight and character about them, I, just like their coach does. And I know they're going to come out with a lot of enthusiasm in the second half, and, and we can play better football, I think. So we got to go in and, and make sure we stay focused on what the task at hand is. Coach, you've instilled confidence back there in Chad Seitz. Uh, what happened at Ball State, he comes up with three field goals in the first half. He's a character kid. I, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> All right, Coach, good luck Thanks. in the second half. All right, there you have it. Back upstairs to you, Tim. All right, Michael, and uh, yes, I think uh, <laughs> Coach is so excited, he almost went off with a headset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you, Randy Walker's a great guy. You talk about character kids, that's what he recruits at Miami. 25 to nothing is our halftime score, and we'll be back with more of the action after this network timeout. You're watching the Mid-American Conference Football Network. on top right now by a score of 25 to nothing. We're going to go to the halftime scores. If we put up the graphics here, this is brought to you by Las Vegas. And the scores are on the Mid-American Conference saying these are non-conference games. Ball State uh, leading, and they just beat Western Illinois by a score of 20 to 7. 
Also around the Big 8, Bowling Green staying in with Missouri right now. That's in the fourth quarter with five minutes left. Bowling Green leading Missouri by a score 17 to 10. Central Michigan beats Weber State by a score 39 to 31 this afternoon. Ohio beats Illinois State by a score 14 to 6. And other games around the involving Mid-American Conference schools that, that have not started yet. We have uh, Eastern Michigan at Pittsburgh and Western Michigan at Indiana. That wraps up the scoring. We'll be back after we take this timeout. for the Las Vegas Halftime Report and plenty going around the Mid-American Conference, some changes, some new schools in the future. With that interview and to find out what's happening around the back, Tim Bray talks with Commissioner Jerry Ippolidi. All right, thanks, Mike. And we're standing here with Jerry Ippolidi, the commissioner of the Mid-American Conference at halftime, 15 months on the job. A lot of things have happened in those 15 months. Well, a lot of water's gone under the bridge, and I'm just very fortunate to be, be the commissioner of this outstanding conference. Now we are in the first of a half a dozen Mid-American Conference television games this year. That's up from last year. Well, uh, two years ago we never had television for football in the Mid-American Conference, and we felt that it's unfortunate that we have great football, good coaches, and certainly several that became outstanding football coaches, not only in the collegiate level but the NFL, and unfortunately the people haven't had the opportunity to, to visualize the quality of football. We feel it's very important to stress a very strong marketing and uh, we've increased our television from four games to six. My goal is to 10, 11, or 12, but what we have also done is increase the, the viewing audience from about an average of four million to 12 million, also increased it about to three or four states to about 15 states. So we feel very good at the progress we made in a very short period of time. Well, there's no question that the more people say Mid-American Conference football, they're gonna like it, and that is uh, equated into some new areas and some new schools. How's the expansion going? Well, the Mid-American Conference has been very aggressive thus far. I think we've reacted to what is transpiring in intercollegiate athletics by fewer conferences but larger uh, divisional concepts. And we're very pleased to have three additional institutions, Marshall uh, in Huntington, Western Virginia, University of Buffalo, naturally in Buffalo, and Northern Illinois University, who will certainly capture the Chicagoland market. What we have done was extended the parameters of the conference. We, for many years, have been uh, identified as an Ohio conference, and I think with additional markets, certainly will have exposure opportunities and market to find product at the Mid-American Conference. Well, just like here at Kent State, a lot of people coming out to see football. I know the Miami had an outstanding crowd for their home opener. A lot of the schools are taking it upon themselves to uh, take that marketing approach and just be proactive with it. Well, uh, we've required each one of our institutions this past year to submit a marketing plan for football only. Uh, certainly it was evidence that uh, the marketing plans that was submitted to the conference has been very effective thus far. We're setting right now preseason uh, uh, season tickets, uh, particularly Eastern Illinois, Eastern Michigan University has right now over 17,000. Last year they had 800. Ball State University had about, uh, I'd say, 1,500. They've sold 7,500. So the marketing plans that have been implemented certainly have been very effective. Jerry, all the best, and we look forward to Mid-American Conference football here on Prime. Thank you. Well, we're looking forward to more than our 50 year, 50th anniversary coming up in May, and, and um, I got a few butterflies right now because the last time I was on this football field, uh, I was a coach at Northern <laughs> Illinois University, and the outstanding coach across the field was Don James. <laughs> that is some uh, great company. Jerry, thanks, and let's go back to Mike now and continue with our halftime. Well, it's halftime at Dick Stadium, the Miami of Ohio. Redskins leading the Kent State Golden Flashes 25 to nothing. We'll be back with more in the second half after we take this break on the Mid-American Conference Football Network. <laughs> 